VTR 2494 78 power, come back Lucy number one, part one, take one. She was such a nice person. Everybody called her Aunt Olive. And she was, of course, devoted to Lucy. Come along, Lucy, it's time. The vicar will be with us in a moment. Come on. Well, I hope you're going to be very brave, um, Lucy, and sensible. What about everything, dear? You see, when somebody passes on, as they say, there's always a lot of changes. It's unsettling, but people soon accept them. What sort of changes? I think we should look on the bright side, Lucy. Now, where is the vicar? I've got a tax avoidance meeting at 15.30. Now, I think you should regard your aunt's death not as an end, but as a beginning, a chance to start a new life. But I don't want to start a new life. Now, Lucy, you said that you were going to be brave. No, you said that I was going to be brave. I'm afraid you have no choice. You see, there's very little money. But it's not the money that matters. Unfortunately, it matters a great deal. I've always said I was so clever with money. My dear child, money and has to be looked 70. after very... Is £1.42. No, it isn't, Aunt Olive, you silly old thing. 35 and 17 is 52. <laughs> so it is. Clever girl. You must be practical, Lucy. You must do what the trustees think best, wherever you are. What do you mean? I shall be at home like I've always been, shan't I? Well, now, Lucy, there are certain things that have happened now that your Aunt Olive is dead now that she's no longer with us. Ah, here comes the vicar. Come along, Mrs. Belling. Come along. You think she knows? Perhaps. She's a very bright child, our Lucy. You haven't said anything, have you? Of course not. You told me not to. Though I must say, Mr. Peel, that I'm not at all happy about it. Lying to her. 
Dear me, Mrs. Belling, we really mustn't use such emotive language. What we're doing is in the child's best interest, you know. I don't think you quite realise, Mr. Peel, how sensitive she is. And I don't think Lucy's going to look at it in quite that way. Think. Yes, Lucy. I think Mr. Peel is trying not to tell me something. How do you mean, Lucy? I don't know exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, as soon as we get to the car, we'll ask him straight out. Perhaps the vicar's told her. I hope he has. She's got to know sometime, otherwise she's in for a very nasty shock. I think I'll ask the vicar to tell her now. Oh, no, please, please, Mr. Peel, now be careful. And she's been so quiet and so restrained since the tragedy that I keep thinking that she's going to break down. I mean, she just has to, doesn't she? It's not normal. Mrs. Billing, I do this sort of thing ten times a week. It's my job. Lucy has been speaking to me, Mr. Peel, and she feels that... Possibly. But I would be most grateful if you could find time to tell Lucy why she can no longer continue to live at Aunt Olive's house. Oh. But I rather thought that you had already... Mrs. Belling thought it would be better coming from you, being a gentleman of the cloth. What does Mr. Peel mean, Vicar? Well, it means, Lucy, that I'm afraid it simply isn't possible for you to live at home all by yourself. But I've always lived there. For as long as I can remember. Well, Lucy, you must always take care of your house. And then it will take care of you. Yes, Aunt Holly. that you've had some cousins, Lucy? No. Well, you have. Distant ones, but definitely related. And we've been in touch with them, and they've very kindly asked you to spend Christmas with them. There are three children round about your age. Your aunt said she'd write to you and tell you all about them. Our very dear Lucy. We're so looking forward to meeting you. I don't want to meet them. Those belonged to my mother. She used them to play cribbage. We'll have them over here. Hello there. Lucy. Ah, there you are. Now then, good news, Lucy. Yes. Yes. 
Now, although Mr. Peel says that most of the furniture must be sold, you may choose one or two favourite pieces to keep until you're old enough to need them. And you can take some of the smaller things away with you now, but not too many, mind. How many? Oh, I think they should all go into this trunk. I'd like to take everything. But you won't need everything. You'll be much too busy doing things with your cousins. No, I won't. Which you'll enjoy once you've got to know them. I don't want to know them. <laughs> that's, that's a silly thing to say. You know, Lucy, I think it's very important that you think positively about this move, particularly as your Aunt Gwen will be here shortly. But I don't want to move! Well, I'm afraid we don't have much choice about that. You see, Mr Peel says that the new owner wants to move in before the end of the week. Ah, I think that's Mrs Belling. I must, uh, I must just go and have a quiet word with her. Yes. Good morning, Mrs. Belling. <laughs> it's a lovely day for it, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed it is, yes. Now, she is going to be all right, isn't she? Oh, of course she is. At least she'll be spending Christmas with a family. Mm, well, a family is just the thing she's not used to, Vicar. She's not been brought up like other children. Well, there isn't really any alternative, is there, Mrs. Belling? Hmm? No, Vicar. I'll go and see how she's bearing up. Fine, fine. Ah, this must be them now. Uh, good morning. This is Mrs. Long, I presume. Uh, quite a nice day for it. Oh, okay, so yes. much for everything you've done. So, Lucy, Mrs. Belling, we are so grateful. And you too, of course, Mr. Thomas. After you, Vicar. I'm so sorry we have to rush away like this, but we didn't leave till later when, than we thought. And then there was that dreadful accident at Mill Hill, or was it Finchley? And of course, the children are just dying to meet Lucy. You will forgive us, won't you? This must be such an upheaval for you, Lucy, dear. What with poor Aunt Olive going and now this move. There must be some dozens of questions you want to ask. And, you know, I did tell you about the children, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Well, I do hope well, you well, like pop music because they're well, simply mad about it. And Patrick's yes. just joined the Young Socialists. Actually, Rachel's keen to join too. But I told her to stick to reading feminist pamphlets till after the exams. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. Bye-bye, <laughs> Lucy. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks bye. so much for everything. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lucy. Be a good girl. <laughs> Don't forget to go, <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> oh. Oh. He's not a very good driver, is he? Yes, he's not. <laughs> Well, you and Rachel should get on like a house on fire, because your Aunt Olive used to be a suffragette, didn't she? I do wish I could get her to wear pretty clothes like you, but she wears those jeans like a second skin. There. When we finished with this, you'll be the belle of every ball. Are you ready to try it on? No, anyway, Rachel's been outnumbered by the boys up to now. I expect you'll find her until the boy. Lucy, we're home. I'm sorry. Oh, come here, you horror. What have I told you about pinching my things? Oh, sorry, Pete. Hello, my name's Rachel. And I'm Patrick, but you can call me Patrick, all right? Yeah, excuse yeah. me. Turkey is Bill. That's the way girls are supposed Bill. to dress, Bill. You remember, Rachel, your sister wore a frock once. Now, everybody in. I don't want a house full of pneumonia. Yeah, uh, Gwen. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Bill, Patrick, come on, help you with the cases. Christmas. Oh, well, a lot. 
Looks like my Aunt Olive's house. Yes, I fancy you noticing that. It was built about the same period, you know. Of course, none of my three would have noticed. Come on. Oh. What's it got in it? A body? Wait, don't look too far. No, backwards. Five trillion bodies. Oh, shut up. It's Probably not. Bag. How about you have a look at the car? Go. Yeah. Oh, if I've left it back. Yes, right. You run on in. I'm just going to park the car in the garage. Oh, it's not here, fun. Oh, come on. Shut that door. Right. I'll see to it. You take Lucy upstairs and show her everything. Oh, Bill. Have you no manners? Go and join your brother. Will you say God? Yeah, do as you are told. Ah, Rachel. Uh, take Lucy away from you. Oh, what a good idea, Pete. Come on, Lucy. Let's escape. Pete says the traffic was ghastly. Pete? No, oh, my father. We've always called him Pete and my mother Gwen. So much less formal, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yes. We're really into democratic informality and family relationships. Anyway, come in. This is us. Us? Hmm. I've emptied the two top drawers of the chest of drawers, and you could have one side of the wardrobe. And that's my bed over there, but we can swap if you want to sleep next to the window. Pete really worked hard in this room. Mm. What's the matter? I'm just used to sleeping alone, that's all. Well, I was, till Gwen pointed out that this was real family democracy in action. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Well, what do you do with it? You just keep it carefully. Don't you have a spare room? Yes, but it's uninhabitable. Mm? You can't live in it. Oh. May I see it, please? Well, there you are. Now do you know why no one can sleep here? Still, by the time Pete's finished with it, he won't recognise it. Full of African heads and primitive weapons. It always is. What was wrong with it as it was? Well, just look at that design. Not to give anyone nightmares. I like it. You do? Won't go well in a modern house, though, would it? But this house is Victorian. Your father said so. It doesn't have to have modern rooms. He loves modernising old houses. He's wonderful at it. He's got some great ideas for in here. He's going to put a large bookcase where that fireplace is, and all that wall there will have built-in cupboards down it. Would it be a bit bare? Yes, lovely. Come on. I don't think it sounds very homely. Neither do I. Me! Me! Oh, oh. Thank you. I must see the attic would be the most fantastic place for a party. Yeah. Oh, oh. I want my potato back. Oh, oh really? Yes, I, no, I know it'd be a fantastic place for a party, but it wouldn't be if all the floorboards gave way beneath you, would it? Well, what about all those trunks? Well, all two of them, you mean? Well, they must weigh more than we do. Not after all these potatoes. Oh, but mind you, they don't clump oh. around like your mob will. You said it would be right to all meet us the young socialists. Yeah, you? uh, after we've done the house up. Yes. No, 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 no. Now, no. okay, look. Washing up. You, you, and you. It was my turn last night. And again tonight. Now, you know what happened to the children of the Kikuyu tribe in Kenya when they complained about the washing up? Yes. yes. You ready? You've got to dry up. You've got to dry up. Dry up yourself, shrimp face. That's quite enough of oh, that. Yeah. Bill, put oh. that salt chicken down. Come back here, you <laughs> evil boy. Where's Lucy? Be quiet, please come on, settle down. Come 
Hang on, on, Phil. Oh. What's the time of the day? It's late. It's late. Oh, it's late. Oh, I'm not in your seat, you idiot. That's where you are. Gosh, what a splashing nighty. Where'd you get it? I didn't get it. <laughs> Aunt Olive made it for me. What? All those frills? They're easy when you know how. I bet the boys will love it. Don't you have one? Oh, sure. <laughs> hey, come on, we've got to get into the bathroom before the boys. We're late tonight. I want everyone in the bathroom right now. Help! Come on, Lucy. Gwen, can't you have a bath in the morning? No, I can't. Gwen, she's got my funnel. Lucy, don't see my bruise. It's all green and yellow and horrible. I got it when Dave Green found me. Where's Bill? Oh, heck. Bill, will you do what you want to? Yes, ma'am. Ah, Lucy. I thought we'd go shopping in the morning and buy some jeans and jumpers and things like Rachel's. Hmm? And then you won't spoil your nice clothes. And much more practical for our menagerie, don't you think? Parents shouldn't bully children! I heard that! Night now, Lucy. See you breakfast. No. Now, come on. Let's have less of this rubbish. Stop it here, man. I'll put you in the towel. Lucy. Yes, Aunt Olive. If it's fine today, we might go for a picnic. Can we make some pasties and some sandwiches? Of course. Turn on the wireless and see what the weather's going to be like. Two cretins, shut up. I'm trying to read. Four years old and still trying to read. Take no note of them. They're at a difficult age. Is there anything I can do to help? Right, time for the war conference. Oh, good. What's it going to be about? How to get our decadent revisionist parents to agree to letting us have a party in the attic. Come on. Oh. He's on about it. It's as steady as a rock. Is he? Was he yours? We need to do a scientific test on this one. Well. No, it's like he was here when we came. Well, we could bring all the kids in the street up and make them jump up and down for 20 minutes. That should do it. <laughs> what about all this stuff? Oh, it was all here when we came. Right, now we need to get organised. Now, I suggest we each make a list of who we want to invite. Then we'll each be responsible for one item. Food. I'll do the records. What about you, Lucy? Lucy? Yes? Your friends. We wanted to know about your friends. My friends? Who do you want to invite? Oh, but I haven't... It's not my party, it's, it's yours. <laughs> it's ours. While you're living here, you join in everything. So it's just as much your party. But you must ask your friends. I think they live rather far away. Tell them to bring sleeping bags. We're always putting people up on the couch downstairs. I don't think it would be worth it. What? Nobody? Nobody, Nobody at all. At all. OK, that's it then. We can start inviting people. Let's go for a walk now and see as many as we can. We've been cooped up in here too long already. I'm going to get my football! Oh, no, it's not going to be that. Are you coming, Lucy? I'd like to stay here. Come here! OK, we shan't be long. Ah! Are you sure you'll be all right? Quite all right, thank you. Hey, wait for me! Who are you?